Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be another Philadelphia Phillies trade deadline video with the last three hours to go on trade deadline day of the MLB trade deadline. And this one's going to be for NL pitchers. We did AL pitchers last week. This week, we're going to do NL. And I have to correct myself. My other video I posted, when I was talking about the Bray Nogo, I was talking about just Bailey Falter and him being the lefties we would have in our bullpen. Obviously, that is not the case. I forgot to mention the man Jose Alvarado, who we got in the offseason, who's 6-0. and Inner stats not pitching amazingly, but is 6-0, and and is a guy that can really take off in the second half of the season himself. So maybe Braden Ogle wouldn't start as quickly as I thought in the majors, but it's still a good, as everything else I said, low-risk, high-reward move. He's looking good in the minors, so all that other stuff stays. But let's get into other NL pitchers the Phillies could potentially get. If we look at our own division, the only teams I can see us trading with if they have anyone left is the Washington Nationals and the Miami Marlins because they're at the bottom of the division. The The Braves aren't going to help you out because they're right behind you. It wouldn't really make much sense if you're the Atlanta Braves to really help them out. So that that's something that, to me, just doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense if you're the Braves coming from their perspective. Now, if you're the Phillies... A guy that's pitched decent for the Nationals in seven starts is Paulo Espino. That would kind of be like a random, like, I mentioned Willie Peralta in the AL. That would kind of be like a pickup like him. Espino's in his 30s. He's been bouncing around his entire career. Maybe he can figure it out now. He's doing good this year, 40-9. to nine. K's the walk ratio with a 3 2 one ERA and only a 1.05 whip. So he's doing pretty darn good this year. I would definitely potentially give him a chance that is for sure if you want to go there. And then if you want to go to the bullpen, this is someone that's pitched really solid out of the bullpen in limited innings this year. Only 16.2 innings pitched in 13 games. But Ryan Harper's pitched very good this year for them. He's somebody you might be able to bring in as a righty. You just got Braden Ogle in a low-risk, high-reward trade. You're going to end up trading a low-tier prospect, I would think, for Ryan Harper as well. As well as um, Espino. And then another guy you're going to end up trading a very low prospect for because he's not the same pitcher, but maybe you would hope he does better than Matt Moore. If you just want to take a chance, you could definitely go out and get John Lester. That's not going to take much at all. That's not going to be much of a big hoorah trade, though, because he's struggling. That would be more of he's going to do more than Matt Moore. So at least we got that type deal. But when you look at them, I don't see Tanner Rainey's having a god-awful season. I don't really see them doing that. Um, so I, I don't really see that happening. When you look at Wander Suaro, he's having a bad season as well. You could hope he turns it on with you, but he has a 5 2 9 ERA, a good K to walk ratio, 31 to 9. So you could hope he turns it on with you, but I would honestly stay away from that. I would just do the aforementioned John Lester as a guy that's maybe better than Matt Moore. Ryan Harper is the best, and then Paulo Espino are really the best to go to there because you definitely don't want to go anywhere damn near close to Patrick Corbin. When you look at the Miami Marlins, the Miami Marlins um, definitely have a couple people you could go for here. If they want to move on from Anthony Bass, Anthony Bass has been a good, solid reliever, a dependable reliever for a while now. I totally get him 3.69, ERA 37 to 11 K to walk ratio. Definitely a guy I would be interested in there. And then another, not trying to stick with the same names, but Anthony Bender. He's a younger guy. He's only 26. He has control, so I don't know if they want to move him. He might take more of a mid-tier prospect. And for us, I don't know what teams would consider a mid-tier prospect since our pool's not that depth compared to other teams. But he would be a nice guy to get if you're able to get him. As I mentioned in the last video of the tweet I brought up, the Phillies teams are reaching out to them. It's just unfortunate that Glenn Tack screwed us over. We don't have the prospect pool. They're asking about the Abels. They're asking about the Stott. Nobody wants to move those guys. They're not going to move those guys. I don't even know if to move a guy that looks really good in the minors, Francisco Morales. So it really limits who you're able to move and what you're able to do here. But when you look at the Marlins, another guy you could get if you want to develop and kind of let Ogle stay in the minors for the rest of the year, that would be Richard Blyer as a lefty. I don't think you get him if you think that Ogle kid you just picked up is going to be a guy that potentially comes in this year. I don't see why you need another lefty. But they also got John Curtis as a great reliever down there. And they also got Dylan Floro. So I think if you're looking for the Marlins, you're looking at relief pitching here that you're going to end up getting from them because they're not going to trade you one of their young starters, obviously. That would be stupid for them to do. So you can potentially get relief pitching from them via 
a John Curtis, Dylan Floro, or obviously one of the Anthonys I just mentioned is an Anthony Bass or Anthony Bender. And I would be perfectly fine with either of those four for elite pitching. They're better than a lot of the righties, obviously, we got in our bullpen right now. Where lefty-wise, Fulcher's pitch solid. At least Alvarado's 6-0. Doesn't have the sexiest interception. Ranger Suarez is a pitch really good. Hector's starting to do better in his role. So things are starting to come together, but you definitely could use a little bit more solidified right-handers in there and just solidify people in general in our bullpen. Now, when you look at the Central, um, the Cardinals are a 500 team. They're a team that seems to always be trying to go for it to the bitter end. So I don't necessarily see them making big moves. The Cubs already did make a move, trading one guy I would have been interested in in Ryan Tepera. Unfortunately, they already moved on from him. Uh, obviously, they have Craig Kimbrell. That's the big name, but I don't see the Phillies doing that because of the aforementioned tweet I mentioned. They don't have the prospect pool to really do it. You're not going to trade the Bryson Stotts or those guys of the road. You'll probably throw Marcon, obviously, in no trade, but I don't think that's going to entice them too much for a guy like Kimbrell, unfortunately. But obviously, if we can do it, uh, hell yeah, go out and get him. But I just don't see it being a thing. Somebody you might be able to get from them, problem is he walks a little bit too many people, but he's a solid relief pitcher, is Dan Winkler. He's the only guy, honestly, I would look to to mention from the Cub. Uh, they have Winkler you could get from him because I just don't see us having the pool to go out and get Kimbrell compared to other people. The only other guy you might want to get from him if you th or them is Jake Jewell, who's pitched solid in the minors and just came up and pitched decent in about two innings so far in the major as a reliever. But that's a that's another like kind of like a a <clears throat> the same move that was just made that is just trying to bring in a guy that can kind of get going and you would hope he can come up from the minors and actually get going in his major league career. So you're basically bringing in another ogle at that point. So you would probably want to bring in somebody with a little bit more of a front. Now the Pirates, could we maybe go back to the Pirates? The Pirates definitely have a couple people that are interesting. Uh, Brew Baker just came up and is looking solid as a starter. A little high ERA at 4.67, but a very good K to walk ratio of 99 to 23. So if you can continue to develop him, that might be nice. Another guy that might also be nice is Chad Cool, who's pitching to a 4.43 this year uh, and is actually pitching fairly solid. He's definitely, I would say he's basically, if Vince Velasquez has actually developed into a solid five starter. That's basically what Chad Cole has made himself into. Not the same pitching repertoire, but just from a player perspective. So I would say that's pretty much what you would get there. A good version, a guy that just gives you innings and actually pitches to a mid-40 ERA rather than a ridiculous 5-something or 6-something ERA. A guy you would obviously want to go to them for is Richard Rodriguez. If they trade you Rich Rod, I feel like that might be similar to Kimball. might be too expensive. So if the Phillies want a closer, I feel like Rossell and Glacius if the Angels are doing that, I know that's an AL pitcher, but that's just a side topic right now. I feel like that's someone they could go for and be able to fit in more to what their trading style is going to be with their prospects. I feel like Rich Rod, they might ask too much for, and Kimbrough, I feel like they're definitely going to ask too much for. But if you look at the Pirates, another guy I would go for is Chris Stratton. He's a former starter, converted to a reliever. He's done good since being a reliever this year, so that's another right-hander you could potentially get there. And then that would round out people from the Pittsburgh Pirates. We now move into the NL West as we're in our last division to go over NL pitchers. The Phillies can potentially acquire the Giants and Dodgers and Padres, unless if they're getting somebody they want back or they're just trying to get somebody because they or move on from somebody Excuse me, because they don't need him on the roster. They ain't moving anybody because that's a three-team juggernaut race to the bitter end in that division. The Rockies and Diamondbacks, obviously, are a completely different story. Those teams are the completely opposite. You would think they would look to move somebody, and you could potentially go after someone like maybe Daniel Bard, who's come back in the league, 55-21K to 21 K to strikeout ratio. Yes, a 4-3-2 ERA, not the sexiest name, but these are the pitchers the Phillies are probably going to be able to get because of Glenn Tack screwing over the prospect pool. You got to get the Ogles. You got to get the bards of the world that are good, solid pitchers, but nothing overly sexy because you don't have the big moves. You're not going to try to give up your great prospects just for rental relievers. Where other teams, like if you're the Padres, if you're the Blue Jays, other than the one trade that they might have just paid over too much for Barrios, but you can give up certain prospects because you have that great prospect pool help. Even with that trade, maybe they have somebody under Martin who they're like, whoa, 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 we love this guy, so who knows? But we'll have to see as the future goes on with that. That's a little just side topic. 
but you're going to have to get these Daniel Bar type relievers most likely just because of the way our prospect pool is. Another guy that you could definitely have interest in if we're talking about from a starting pitcher perspective, he's still not walking a lot of people, still a great K to stroke ratio, or K to walk ratio in 49 to 19, five po- or 4.5 to ERA in almost 62 innings pitch, a guy that was top five in the rookie of the year. Kyle Freeland is a guy you can get and try to get going again. Uh, he has certain solid inner stats, like his K-to-walk ratio, like I said. <clears throat> Not the best overall ERA. A guy that I would love from their team is a guy that's been good in 17 starts. 3.6 on ERA, 86-24 K-to-walk ratio. Only a 1.05 whip is Austin Gomber, who looks to be coming into his own, but I think they might want a middle tier and a guy that the Phillies might not want to give up for him, like maybe even ask for a Morales, um, just because he seems to be developing. He's already up in the majors where Morales looks good, but obviously you never know what anyone's going to be fully until they get up in the majors and actually show it to you. A guy that there's obviously been rumors of interest in is John Gray with the Phillies 3.67 ERA, 91 Ks to 38 strikeouts. I would love to have Gray on the team. I just wonder if he's going to have a little bit too high of an answer price, not from himself, but just the Rockies having the answer price for him. And I wonder if that'll push him out of our league. But if he's someone we can get, I would definitely be in on that. That is for sure. Um, And then when it comes to their team, that's pretty much it. They don't have anyone else, unless if you want to get a guy that's only pitched a select few innings in Antonio Santos, which would be another, like, Ogle-type pickup, but he's only 24, so I don't think they're going to be ready to move on from him yet in relief and has pitched fairly well, but has issues with walking people with 7-4 to uh, walk-to-K ratio. Now, when you look at the Diamondbacks as we wrap it up with our final team, this video is going to end up being shorter than the AL video. It ended up being more AL pitchers to talk about than NL pitchers to grab from. And also, this is a week later, so there's guys we can't grab and talk about because they've already been grabbed in the trade market. A guy that would be pretty solid to pick up, um, that would be a risk, but a guy that's a veteran that's been around maybe from the Diamondbacks to take a risk on, he's come back and pitched three innings this year, is Tyler Clippard. That's somebody that the Phillies could definitely afford and afford to get. That's someone that's not going to take. It would probably take somebody like a Gutierrez that was traded for Ogle, almost an equivalent type. It probably won't take something much harder than that. A guy that's been a solid reliever since he was, or a solid starter again, excuse me, not reliever. If you want to put him at the bottom of your rotation is Jake Faria in three starts. He has a 4.05, 20 to 7 K to walk ratio. So he's starting to pitch fairly decent against him. Maybe you could grab him in and do well with him. Merle Kelly's also been rumored to the Phillies. He's in his 30s, an older um, cat coming over since he went overseas. 4.39, 105K to walk ratio. So you definitely have a decent amount of people from the Diamondbacks, surprisingly for them being a trash team, that you could try to pick up. They also have no Ramirez, who's an experienced reliever. Only just pitched 18 innings this year, but another guy like Clippert, an experienced guy that's been around the block, you could definitely bring him in as a right-hander for sure as well. And if you want to take a chance on a lefty starter, you could bring in Caleb Smith, 4-6-1 ERA, a higher ERA, 96 Ks of 39 walks. Hope he starts getting it going again there. Or an old around-the-block guy. That has closing experience, six saves. I don't know if he'll be able to come in and be the closer for you, but you could definitely afford this guy. And maybe he can come in and get it going again for you in closing situations. Is Joaquin Soria. So these are the guys that the Phillies are going to, unfortunately, because of the way Glenn Tech screwed the prospect, who are going to have to afford. But you can get good guys that have been shown progress, like Braden Ogle in the minors. And there's certain guys you mentioned in this video that are like that, that have been shown progress, and guys in last year's video, like Cole Suster, who's just 31 yet, but has really progressed and actually showed up and showed out how to break out years as a reliever, and relievers are so fluent, you want to get them in their breakout years and just have them until they start struggling and really bank on the breakout season, which is this year for a guy like him, and obviously this year for guys also, if we're talking about another guy um, from the Diamondbacks, would also be this year for potentially a guy like Faria, who's actually starting to look like he's coming into his own as a starting pitcher and acting can be a solid bottom of the rotation piece compared to someone like Vince Velasquez or Matt Moore. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. This has been a Philadelphia Phillies trade deadline edition looking at potential NL pitchers. Obviously, there's a couple guys you probably forgot to mention, but some of the guys I also didn't mention because of the Phillies don't have the prospect pools to trade for certain guys. Hope you all have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. 
Please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, we really appreciate your support. Really appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. Peace out. And also subscribe to Steel Flyer as well as Flyers Nitty Gritty if you're also a hockey fan. Like that great post reveals I am in the background. Peace out. This is Sports for That News. I'm Joe Boyer.